Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we are going to discuss real quick how the paper one it needs to be solved, some kind of strategies and some small tips that we can see throughout the paper. So uh, without further ado, let's jump straight to the paper and see what we can do. Now, this is the first page of your paper when you receive the exam. Randomly I chose one of those past exams papers. So here, of course, you see the instructions. Here you have to put your session number and so on. Now, you can see clear that, of course, you need a physics data booklet and a calculator. Okay, without those two, don't even go to take the exams. In these papers, you need to answer every question. And also here, it's very important that you need to answer all your solutions into the box that is provided in the paper. We will see later what I mean. So now let's go and see a couple of those. Now for example, here again it specifies the answers inside the box. Now if for some reason you go here and you try to solve the exercise and you write, you place down formulas and calculations and whatever you do, uh, it doesn't really matter. And then the space, it's not enough. And then you realize that, oops, Everything here is wrong. So what do you do? Do you write here outside of the box? No. You cross this out and you will have an extra paper. And what do you do? You just pass the question here. So you say from the section one, whatever it is, the number one, A, it has to be this kind of solution. And you solve in the extra paper that you can have. You will always have this choice. So if something goes wrong, you just deal with the extra paper or if it's the box it's not enough for you to answer the question then of course you need to write down in the extra paper so next to the to every question you see this number here this it says how many marks this question has so now let's see for example and especially when it comes with definitions and so on how these marks are going to give us what exact we have to do and how many points we need to make in order to explain the question. Now, here for example, it says, explain how Newton's third law applies when the racket hits the tennis ball. So this is your question here. It says that you have a racket, you hit a tennis ball and so on. I'm not going to go through the exercise. I'm just going to show you here the specific parts. So questions like explain, describe, outline, state and so on, you just need to give explanation, sometimes detailed and sometimes not, about what is happening there. So when you see Newton's third law, you know what is happening. So you see two points. So it's definitely that you need to make two points here in your answer, in your solution. So what do we have? Of course, Newton's third law, it says the force from the object A to the object B is equal and opposite to the object B to the force from the object P to object A. So you write this down, of course. And now what do you have here? You have force of the ball. We have one object, that it is the ball, and another object, that it is the racket. So the force of the ball on the racket is equal and in the opposite direction to the force of the racket on the ball. So here, of course, you state the object A exerts a force on the object B and then the object B exerts a force on object A. So this is how you state Newton's third law. But now where are these two marks? Why you have two marks and it's not only one? Well, here is of course because you have to state that it is equal in magnitude but also it is opposite in the direction. We talk about force. Force is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. So these are these are your two points in order to receive full marks. If you say only equal, it's one point. If you say only opposite, it's one point and so on. So this is why we need always to check here the number and realize how many points we need to make in order to, rec to receive full marks. Now in a similar way, let's see one more definition to be sure that we understand. It says, it says here, define internal energy. 
Okay, you know that internal energy is the total energy of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the molecules in a substance. So you have to state those two things. The sum of the kinetic energy and the total kinetic energy and the total potential energy. And this is your one point. In order to have two, what else you have to state? Which energy of what? Of course, of the molecules in a substance. And this is your second point. Okay, you explain what it is, but you explain also where it is. So these are simple definitions. They need the explanation to be particular in the exact amount of points that the answer looks for. Let's see also here, there are a couple of, sometimes of course we need to do calculations and uh, solve for different variables and so on. So let's see here uh, what we have with calculations. Because it says that you have this number of moles in an, in an ideal gas. The gas has a specific volume of 21 meters cubed and a pressure of 1.4 pascal. Determine in Kelvin the temperature of the gas in the cylinder. Two points. Now why it is two points and why it is not only one? Here it comes that this exercise, usually these exercises, they have two points and they come down to two different parts. And what is the first one? The first one is to identify the formula that you have to use. And of course, it is the ideal gas formula. And this is given your data booklet. But here you want to solve for temperature. So you need to rearrange this one. So the rearrangement, it is your first mark. Or you can just substitute the numbers here, the values. So what do you have? You have 1.4 for pressure times 21 for volume divided by 0 0.46 multiplied by the constant 8.31 and so on. So either this, either this, whatever you reach first, it's going to be your first mark. Okay, I'm saying whatever you reach because usually you have an extra paper to solve your problems and then you transfer it in this paper. So you might just skip the substitution or you might just skip the rearrangement but you have to show one of those. Either that one, either that one. And it's going to be your first mark. And of course, your second mark, it's going to be when you do your calculations, you're going to have a specific value. Here, in this case, it's 7.7. .7, and this is going to be your second mark. In case that you just show only the end here, a bold answer, sometimes they give you the full mark, sometimes they give you only one mark. So you have to be careful and you always need to do the rearrangements to be sure. Now the next one here, it is an interesting one because it has only one mark. And here, these questions that they have only one mark usually are the simplest one. So here it says, the kinetic theory of an ideal gas is one example of a scientific model. Identify one reason why a, why a scientist finds such models useful. So here, what do you have to say? Why we use these simplified models in order to simplify, okay? Or in order to predict, or in order to explain, or whatever. Whatever reason you choose, okay? Only one of those, it is, this is what we need. One word, okay? Sometimes one small phrase. Okay, one mark, it's not gonna be anything more than this. Now, let's see here the next one, in number two because I want to show you something. It says, it gives you, of course, some information. There is a double slit experiment. We have interference patterns and so on. It says, calculate the wavelength of the light. Give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Now, why I want to focus on that? I usually say to my students that whatever numbers you see in your question of the significant figures, the same answer needs to be here in the end. Now, sometimes, if, it, if you don't do that, it's not a problem. But if you don't use the same significant figures, and if you don't use units, etc., you're going to lose one or two marks overall from your paper. Okay, so that's why I'm saying, like, usually do the same significant figures. Now, in the case that the answer asks for it, then you definitely have to do it. Otherwise, one mark, it will be just gone. Not from overall, only for this specific question. 
So let's see here what we do. We want to calculate the wavelength. Of course, you know what's happening here. You need to use this formula. Okay, because we have the distance of the slits, you have the distance from the screen and so on. So you rearrange lambda is equal to S times D over capital D. And this is your first mark, the rearrangement of the formula. Of course, your second mark, it will be the application of the numbers and the calculation that you have to do. So you are going to reach a value for lambda that's going to be 0 0.5. 685 times 10 to the power of negative 6. And this is your second mark. And of course, the third mark is to use the correct significant figures. And of course, here what you have to do, you have to use the correct significant figures that you see here, the units, of course, and this is your third mark. Okay, we see here two significant figures in our problem. So this is what we have to use as well. So you need to be careful. When the answer specific asks, you have to use the correct significant figures. If it doesn't ask, this for example, if it wasn't ask, it will be two marks. And your answer will be over here. But of course, if you repeat that again and again and again, in the end, you're going to have some points excluded in your total mark. Now, another example that I want to show you is, for example, in this case, that uh, we have a heater provides specific amount of power and uh, it has a, a potential difference and so on. All the information are here. Now it says calculate the current in the copper cable, one mark, and then calculate the resistance of the cable, two marks. Why this is the difference here? Now, let's see the problem here. In order to calculate current, we need to use this formula for power, V times I. So you solve here for I power over voltage and you have the power and you have the voltage so what do you do you apply the numbers it's 8.5 times 10 to the power of 3 watts divided by 240 volts it will give you a value of 35 amperes and all of this it it counts as one mark now you will tell me why it doesn't count as two here is my first mark i rearranged here is my second mark i solved it okay this is very simple. That's why usually they use one mark. Also, it comes because in total you have to have 50 marks for SL or 95 marks for 90 or 95, I don't remember, for HL. So these simple calculations and the arrangements, they will give you one mark. Now, let's see the difference here that it says two marks. So here it says calculate the resistance and you have resistivity, cross-sectional area, length of cable, Straightforward, what we need to do, we need to use the formula for resistivity, rho times A over L. And now here, you rearrange R is equal to rho times L over A. And of course, here you need to substitute the values. And this is going to be your first mark. Now, rho is 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 8. The length is 10. The area now is 6 millimeters square. So when you try to put the number here, many times students do 6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Be careful here. Here it's millimeters square. So this negative 3 needs to be to the power of 2. So it's going to be negative 6. And this is your first mark. This is what we are looking for in order to give you one extra mark. The correct substitution, the correct rearrangement of something more complicated than just this. And of course, your other mark, it's going to be the solution here. It's going to be 0 0.28 ohms. And this is your second mark. Okay, so when you see something like this, in comparison with that, then you have to think that here it's something more complicated. So you need to be extra careful of how you solve this. And that's why it gives you, for example, one extra mark. And this is how your mind needs to go straight away in the position of, be careful here with this exercise. And now let's see one last thing. We have, for example, here a question about uniform circular motion. And the number B it says, so that the orbital speed of Phobos is about 2 kilometers per second. So why it doesn't tell you just calculate the speed, the orbital speed? And it says, so that is this much. Anyway, here you can just do the what you have to do in order to find it. 
So you need to go through a process like to, to state the speed and of course the angular speed and from here you are going to rearrange, you solve for v 2 pi r over t and of course this is your first mark and then you give the answer it's 2.13 kilometers per second so it's almost 2 kilometers per second okay so this is how you solve this problem now the next one it says deduce the mass of mars when you saw that the when you see that the previous question it says show something then you know that more likely this something is going to be used here and they do that because if for any reason you cannot solve this I don't know, you don't remember a specific step here, okay, doesn't matter if you cannot solve this one, at least you can solve the next one that's why it says so that this is much and so on so when you see something like this, you know that this one is going to be used to the next question and in case that you cannot solve this one, don't worry, you can still solve the next one so from here what you have to do, it's also a trick for you to remember that I need to use orbital speed here, okay, so I need to do something here in order to apply the orbital speed. Of course here you know in order to find the mass you have to equalize the centipedal force with Newton's universal law of gravitation. So here you have mv square over r is equal to gmm over r. Of course simplifications here, oops, here it's square. So from here you find that the mass it is v square times r over g and this is your first your first mark here in order to equalize the centripetal force with a gravitational law and here is your second mark when you reach the point of solving for the specific quantity that you want and now what is happening if you use the number that you found here before 2.13 so for velocity of 2.13 you are going to find a mass of 6.4 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms and of course this one is the last third mark now if you use the velocity as 2 as it's given from before you are going to find a value of 5.6 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms this is your last mark anyway in your quest now it doesn't matter which one you do both of them are acceptable you will not lose any marks it doesn't matter which answer you use this one or that one okay so this is why they tell you so that this is this much and so on okay so that was all for today guys uh, you need to practice a lot with these specific papers in order to be very familiar and uh, of course you need to study hard and good luck